Well, good morning, family. Everybody all right? Okay, praise the Lord. I'm going to move this microphone because I'm going to mess that up. I don't know where I'm going with this. Everybody talk amongst yourselves for a second. Okay. I just didn't want it to fall, you know, because it's, you know, it's money. So <laughs> we don't want that to fall. All right. Good morning, fam. Good morning. Um, uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is AJ. I'm the lead pastor here. I'm so grateful that you're here on this holiday weekend. Special blessing for you in heaven because you came to church on the holiday weekend. That is, that's the first and only heretical thing that I'll say today um, from here on out. Uh, we'll be locked into what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, there was a couple of announcements that I want to uh, double click on. The first um, is what Michelle said, uh, our summer series here at uh, Victory, um, our Family Fellowship Sundays. Uh, those are after service. And the first one is next week. So I want you to come with your uh, hearts hungry, but then also your, your, your stomach's hungry too, uh, so that we can stay. It's a long sermon. Hey, 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 Sandy, that'll, that'll be enough out of you today. Okay. Hey, hey, Michelle, hey, work on that. All right. So uh, we are encouraging, and Brian, I got a little bit of a ring up here, brother. Uh, we are encouraging you all to um, stay after service. And then in addition to that, we're going to have some midweek meetups um, that will be at local parks. So, um, and this one will be bring your own dinner, okay? So the church is going to buy you dinner on June 4th, July 9th, or lunch-ish, depending on how long I preach, dinner or lunch, um, <laughs> on June 4th, July 9th, and August 6th, and then we'll come and do uh, kind of a, a community feel, family type uh, lunch moment together, or dinner moment, on June 15th, 29th, July 20th, and August 18th. Um, we feel like it's important for us to not just see each other in this building, um, but to see each other in the community, right? Yeah. And then to also give the community a chance to see us, right? Yeah. Uh, we know that, um, uh, well, we're going to preach about this today, that uh, the power of God wasn't just made for a room, right? It was yeah. meant to spill out onto the streets. It was meant to spill all over the place. And so we want to encourage you to make time in um, your schedule uh, to come to that. More details will be coming, especially with the midweek meetups. We know the Family Fellowship Sundays will be here. It'll be up in the cafeteria, same as it was for Nation Sunday. Um, but the midweek meetups will be local into our community. So we want to make sure that you mark your calendars for that. The second uh, announcement for Michelle was our city kids. We are excited about this family. Uh, we're giving our, our kids a chance to go away to camp um, in uh, Pennsylvania this upcoming summer. Um, we will not be doing a VBS here. This is going to be in lieu of our Vacation Bible School. Um, so I want to make sure that you all mark your calendars. Uh, this is for ages something to something. Uh, which I, 8 to 18. Someone was listening to the announcement. There we go. Uh, it's for ages 8 to 18. Uh, we will take our kids up to Pennsylvania. Uh, City Kids is actually a uh, summer camp um, that Angel and I have been uh, in fellowship with for, uh, yes, yeah, about 15 years, I think, ish. 2007 is a number. Somebody do the math. Okay. Anyway. Um, so we are very close uh, friends with the camp director there. This is quality ministry. Uh, we would not be sending our babies anywhere uh, that uh, we had any doubt about that. So I would encourage you, if you are on the fence about what to do with your kids this summer, send them to camp, okay? Uh, it will be a life transformative uh, time there. Amen, fam? Amen. All right. And then the last uh, pre-service, the pre-sermon, pre-something, uh, moment is uh, it's Memorial Day uh, tomorrow, fam, and I uh, I want to get a chance to honor uh, those who are are taking the holiday tomorrow and remembering uh, someone who has lost their life. Um, we recognize that Memorial Day is a time to uh, to remember our, the troops that are no longer with us, um, and I think that uh, what's as I'm thinking about this moment, I'm reflecting on the scriptures. Um, in John 15, 13, that says, you know, no greater love has any man than this, but to lay down a life for a friend. And uh, many of uh, the soldiers um, have done just that, have laid down their lives. Um, listen, by, if, if you've been around Victory, you know that, uh, we, that by no means do we think uh, America is, is perfect. Uh, by no means do we think that America is holy. Uh, by no means do we think this, but what we, we do want to do is uh, pray for the good of our city, pray for yeah. the good of our nation, yeah. and we want to honor those who have uh, who have died in, in service. So 
Uh, just for a moment, uh, if you wouldn't mind, let's just pause and pray for those who are remembering tomorrow. Um, Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, that you are the God of all comfort, um, and you comfort those who mourn. So, Lord, as our nation takes a moment to pause and to remember uh, fallen soldiers, God, um, Lord, I, I pray uh, that you would be near. God, that you would be near to the brokenhearted. Um, God, we don't want to ever grow so insensitive uh, to, to, to people that we, that we don't pray. So, Lord, I pray for a new level of sensitivity in us as a people, and we pray for you to be near to those who are, who are mourning and grieving tomorrow. God, thank you um, for your power and your presence to be near to the brokenhearted, to bring comfort to all who mourn. God, I pray um, for gladness where there is sorrow. In Jesus' name. Okay, family. Um, well, uh, if you do not know, on the liturgical calendar today is Pentecost Sunday. All the right. I got some people raising for just a Sunday to celebrate, okay? Uh, today is not just Memorial Day weekend. It is Pentecost Sunday where we get a chance to celebrate the sending of the Spirit. We are so grateful uh, and we are so welcoming of the Holy Ghost in this church and in our services. Amen, family? We are so thankful uh, for Pentecost Sunday. And don't worry if you're like, I don't even know what Pentecost is. That's fine. It's a Greek word that means 50 days. That's all. It's just strange. Like, why are they clapping over 50 days, okay? Maybe you didn't even know that part, okay? We'll start from scratch. Don't you worry. Uh, so we are so excited um, uh, to talk through uh, and preach through Pentecost Sunday. Uh, and if you don't know why people clapped when I said it was Pentecost Sunday, hopefully by the end of this service, uh, you will join us in, uh, in celebrating uh, the sending of the Spirit because we recognize um, everything changed for us uh, when we were given uh, the Spirit. Um, and I don't know what tradition or what culture you might have grown up into, but uh, we want to let you know that the Spirit of God is active uh, and He is living in Amen. this church. And we are so grateful for His presence this morning. Amen, family? Amen. Okay, so the title of, this, of the message this morning is called the permanent promise, the permanent promise, the permanent promise. And um, we'll be coming from Acts chapter 2, uh, 1 through 18. And it says this, <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's exciting, right? Yeah. And then it got even wilder. Look at this, y'all. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Well, that's a party. Okay? You over here, we're, we're, we're huddled together. The Holy Ghost falls, right? Sound of wind is happening. Right? Now, then they, they, look, look at them trying to describe it, right? I, I think there was like fire that came down, and all of a sudden people start speaking languages, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, languages they didn't learn, okay? Now, y'all, now wait a minute now. Y'all are acting like this is regular. <laughs> okay, watch this. Stand up and speak French then, right now. <laughs> or Spanish, right now. Or Italian, right now. Huh, looks like you need the ghost, don't you? <laughs> all right, let's get excited about Pentecost, all right? So they start busting out of languages that they didn't learn, okay? Rosetta Stone ain't had nothing on this, okay? All right? Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered. I would say so, right? Because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished and saying, now, wait a minute, are not all those who were speaking, aren't they all Galileans? That means that they should be speaking one language. That means that there should be, they should just be able, I should only understand them speaking in their own language. And then he says, and then it says, and how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Now, wait a minute, how is it that that 
that when the Spirit of God now falls, everyone, everyone can understand in their native tongue. Not in their learned tongue, but in their native tongue. There was something about what the Spirit did that, oh, wait a minute, reconciled us to God and reconciled us to each other. There was something that happened where now I can understand the same message in my tongue. The power of Pentecost was already flowing. And how is it that we hear each one of us, verse uh, uh, 8, in our, in, our, in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya uh, belong, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabian, uh, Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. God made his message easy for someone to understand. When Pentecost fell, the message of the gospel made it relatable immediately. Yeah. I can understand what's going on. Yeah. All right. And all were amazed and perplexed. I, isn't that how we, sometimes when we experience God, we know what it's like to be both amazed, Randy, amazed and perplexed, baby. We know what it's like to be both shocked and a little bit scared all at the same time. I'm amazed and I'm kind of like, now, did they have Rosetta Stone, though? Like, how? What, I don't know. I don't want to step all the way into it, right? All right? So it says this. And they, uh, uh, what is it? Where am I at? And all were amazed. Oh, there you go. Verse 12. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? They said, well, let, I don't know. Let's figure this thing out, okay? All right, so there's French and Italian and Spanish. All of it's happening, right? Okay? What does this mean? But so some people were inquisitive. Some people were like, I'm not ready to name it yet. Let me just see what it means. I'm not so sure, okay? But other people mocked, right? What does it say? It says, uh, 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 verse 13, but others, others mocking said, they're all filled with that new wine. They ain't been in that drink, drink. <laughs> they have been sipping. <laughs> I'm, never mind. They, <laughs> I was going to quote a song, and I was like, that's not. I, don't, I looked around. I felt the conviction of God, but I looked straight. <laughs> that's, that's, come back. Okay. So, so they, they had, let's just read the Bible. The new wine. That's a, let's just stay, Bible safe, right? Write that example. Let's not, I don't want to contextualize that too much. Anyway, so, so they were enjoying Memorial Day a little day early, so they thought, they said, oh, they, they, they've got this new wine that is, that, 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 that's caused them to, be, to, to have a little bit of a moment, right? They did not understand what was happening, okay? And then, and then uh, but Peter, verse 14, but Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them, okay? Peter said, all right, we better, okay, we better get some order to this thing, right? Now, Peter is in the room, right? The power of God falls, right? It says that everyone spoke in tongues. So Peter's speaking in tongues too, right? It was so powerful that they could not contain it inside the moment, right? Or inside the room. It burst out onto the streets. Y'all catch the visual. They are out here speaking in tongues, right? Speaking, and this one was known languages. They're speaking known languages that they did not know, right? It spilled out onto the streets. Now a crowd is formed to like, you know, that's interesting. Let's go see what that's about, right? So they're watching this, right? And But the other part of the crowd that, that is watching them is just like, well, no, no, no. They're just drunk, right? So Peter, in the midst of all of this chaos, with no warning, he steps up. He stands, he said, I better, I better grab some order to this thing, right? And this is what he said. He said, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Peter said, look, it's too early for them to be this drunk. That's what he said. Now, I always joke about this moment. I said, Peter clearly had not been a part of college ministry, okay? <laughs> that have, listen, I was in campus ministry for over 10 years. It's, that wouldn't have been, that wouldn't apply. It was, I said on a Thursday, anyway. So, <laughs> for these people are not drunk since it's only the third hour of the day. Peter said it's too early for that, okay? <laughs> this is verse 16, but this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Now, I want to mess with that thing, that son and daughter part, but you know, I'm going I'm to keep on going. Okay, but this is a place where it says that there's equal inheritance for both men and women, that there is a place of equality in the scriptures. It didn't say that it will just fall on the men. It said that it will fall equally on the men and the women, and both of them will prophesy. Okay, that was nowhere. Let's keep going. That one in the notes. I don't want to mess with that thing too much, but it's something, something's pulling on me there. I want to make sure that you are very clear in this space, that we empower, we endorse, we promote the call of God on men and women in this house. Amen. We believe that men and women are called for leadership. Amen. We believe that men and women can preach the gospel. Amen. We believe that men and women can pastor. We believe that we will step fully into all that the Spirit of God came to do, and part of what the Spirit of God came to do was to equalize us. Amen. The Spirit of God will pour out on sons and daughters equally, Amen. and they will both prophesy. Amen. All right, he says, uh, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. That was the day of Pentecost, family. Let's pray quick. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. God, I pray for Pentecost power to fall in this place. Lord, I pray that it wasn't just for them, but God, we can experience right here, right now, the same Holy Ghost that poured out on the people back then to be in here today. God, bless this service. Bless this message. Spirit of God, fall in Jesus' name. Amen. So. The, the, what is the title? The, the, I had to change that thing. The permanent promise. The permanent promise. The permanent promise. So, um, um, uh, uh, my, my little guy, well, my big guy, Asa, uh, you know, I had, I, uh, I had given him, um, uh, uh, these, these, these sunglasses to borrow, okay? Now, he likes, he likes borrowing my sunglasses because he thinks it makes it look, he, he looks cool in them. You know, could daddy make it look good? So he want to make sure that was for my own self. That was my own self. I'm sorry. So he, so he, uh, so he had, uh, he had my sunglasses, and it was, um, it was one that now, now I will say this. I do wear sunglasses, but I buy cheap ones because I know I'm going to lose them. Okay, I'm not responsible. All right. So, uh, and for sunglass keeping. So, um, so uh, I let my son wear my sunglasses. Okay, and I said, I said, uh, here, baby, you can have these or whatever. And so, you know, he wore them around, you know, too, you know, too big for his face, or whatever. But he loved it; it looked cool, right? And it was so. It, it, he, he, he was acting like he loved it so much. I was like, well, let me let the baby keep the eight for ten dollars. Let me let, let the baby keep the sunglasses, okay? And so, and so I, I said, you know, you can have these or whatever. And so, but I, I forgot to tell him that he could keep them, right? And so, at the end of the day, here come my little guy, and. Uh, and he comes to give, bring me back the sunglasses. So responsible, okay? Now, I didn't forget he had them, okay? And, uh, and, and, so, and so he comes back and he says, um, you know, Daddy, you know, he, you know, here are your sunglasses. I said, no, baby. When, when Daddy said you could have them, I wasn't fitting to take them back from you. What I, what I had given you was permanent. What I, what I was giving to you the, this moment, it, it was permanent. And, and I recognize that, that we also have received some permanent gifts from God. Yeah. We also, and, and, and sometimes, family, if we're not careful, we'll approach God trying to give him back what he has given to us. Yeah. We'll not, or we'll, we won't fully experience the joy of the gift that God has given us, and we'll try to start holding it just for a moment to give it back. But I believe that what the Lord wants us to understand this morning was that when the Holy Spirit fell, that was a permanent gift to us. That it was not to be returned. It was not to be handled as though it was going to leave us. The promise of the Holy Ghost is here for you. It will be here for your children and your children's children. The promises of God are permanent in your life. So we go to this, we go to this, this, this moment of, 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 of Pentecost, right? Now, I told you I'd explain this, so let's nerd out for a second, okay? Now, in the Old Testament, there were several uh, 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 feasts. We would call them parties, okay? There were several feasts that used to take place in the Old Testament that would have uh, been a part of the Jewish culture that they would have observed in the New Testament. Are we following? 
there was like, there was Passover, that's probably the most famous one, everybody heard of Passover, right? Um, but then there was also this thing called uh, the, the Feast of, of what was called First Fruits, okay? Anybody ever heard of that? Maybe some people grew up in churches with like first fruit offerings and things like that. Well, that was to celebrate the first uh, harvest of barley, okay? And so there would be this, 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 this great festival where they would offer sacrifices to God, okay? Celebrating God for the first fruit of the harvest, okay? Now, from the first fruit of the har uh, 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 the it's called the Feast of First Fruits, right? From the, the, the Feast of First Fruits, right, they would count 50 days, 50 days, right? And they would have another party, right? Now, that was now, th now they might have been on the college campus. I don't know. This is, this is, they was partying a lot, right? So from first fruits, 50 days, and then there would be this other feast. Um, in the Greek, it's called Pentecost, right? But it would be, uh, it was in the Hebrew language, it was called the Feast of Weeks or the Harvest Feast, right? Now, this would be a celebration where they would celebrate um, not the barley harvest, but the wheat harvest, right? And so there would be another moment of celebration, a moment, another moment of fun, uh, uh, to celebrate what God had done to provide for them and bring in the harvest of wheat. Now, you might want to, you, you know, it being called uh, the Festival of, of Weeks or the Festival of Harvest, the reason it was called the Festival of Weeks is because, um, like I said, it was 50 days, right? And so they, people used to refer to it as a week of weeks, right? Because we know seven uh, times five is, uh, is, is what? I mean, not seven times five. Seven times seven is 49, sorry. 35, seven times five is 35, okay? Thank you. That's not what I was trying to say, though. Seven, <laughs> seven, seven times seven, which would be a week of weeks, is 49, okay? And so uh, they, would, they would call it the Festival of Weeks, right? The Festival of Weeks, right? Or the Festival of Harvest, right? Now, something that you need to know about this particular Festival of Harvest or Festival of Weeks um, was that this one was actually instituted in, uh, in Levitical law. Like they, this is something that they had to do in Jewish law. They had to celebrate it. And there were different, there were different, um, 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 uh, there were different uh, uh, things that they had to do to celebrate uh, different types of festivals. Well, this one was actually what was known as a pilgrimage festival, meaning that they actually had to come to Jerusalem to celebrate it, okay? They, there were some festivals that they could celebrate where they were or in their own home, right? But this one was not one. They actually had to come all together and celebrate this thing here in Jerusalem. So not only was it, was it something that was required by law for them to actually be in Jerusalem, then there was also a, a, a shutting down of, of culture when it would happen. It was a holiday. So there, you know, shops would be closed, right? There wasn't supposed to be any type of servant work that would happen, right? This was a moment where the whole city would pause, listen, to celebrate the harvest from God. Are we there? So this would become the background. Now, there wasn't Pentecost. Uh, uh, Pentecost is, is simply the Greek word for it, okay? So this would be the background that the Spirit of God would outpour himself on. Do y'all see the parallel there? Okay, let me break it down for you. In the natural celebration of a harvesting season, God decides to pour out his spirit for a spiritual harvest in this season. Are we there? So on the backdrop of Pentecost, we see that, that the spirit of God pours out and they went from celebrating, listen, a natural harvest of wheat to celebrating a supernatural harvest of souls. That's what Pentecost did. Okay, so if you don't know the rest of the story, let's read just one verse, okay? Learn to summarize. Here we go. Acts 2.41, it says this. So this is after Peter preached. So I just read to the beginning of Peter's sermon. He said a lot of things, okay? Peter preached long, okay? Peter would have preached till it was till it was dinner time, but I'm not because it's a holiday weekend. Here we go. So Acts two forty one. It says so. Those who received his words were baptized. Uh, his words talking about Peter's words, and they were added that day about three thousand souls. Three thousand souls were added on the day of Pentecost. So they, again, went from celebrating a harvest of wheat to celebrating the harvest of us, yeah. Yeah. to celebrating the harvest of souls. And on that day, through one sermon, 
a crowd became a congregation. Through one message with the Spirit of God moving through it, it became a church. And so for many of us, we need to turn to each other and say happy birthday because that was the birthday of the church. Before the Spirit of God fell, it was a gathering. It was a group. But when the Spirit of God fell, it became a bride. It became the part that Jesus is returning for. All from the day of Pentecost. All from the Spirit of God falling. And so when I talk to you about the permanent promise this morning, let me be clear. The most powerful promise of Pentecost was the Holy Spirit. The most powerful promise that we received on Pentecost Sunday was the presence of the third person of the Trinity. It was the Spirit of God making himself known in the space. That was the power of of Pentecost. Amen. Now, we recognize that on that day, things are happening, right? It's a lot of things getting up, okay? There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things happening, right? Now, when all of it was going crazy, I said that Peter stood up and he said some things, okay? Let's go back to that, right? In verse uh, 14, it says, but Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give ear to my words. For the people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Okay. Things are happening. Things are going everywhere, right? And and Peter is able to say, this is not that. This is this. Part of the gift of the Holy Spirit being made known to a people is that now we will be able to step into culture and say, it's not that, it's this. It's not this thing that you think that it's, that it's not what culture or what news is trying to present to us. It's not what this uh, station might be trying to tell us. It's actually this. It helps us navigate and discern well what's really going on. Because not everything that is presented to us as truth is truth. And so he was able to say, no, no, no. It's not what you all are saying. It's what Joel said. It's what the word of God said. Now, he goes on to pro- to, uh, to quote Joel, I don't know why I said Joel. That thing sounded spiritual, didn't it? Joel. Jo- Joel. I like that. I'm holding, that's his Pentecost Sunday. It'll allow me for liberty. All right. Joel 2, 28. This is what he quotes almost verbatim, right? He didn't listen. He didn't roll. He didn't go unroll a scroll. He didn't. This was something that already had to be deposited in him. You see, sometimes culture catches us off guard. Because we have not spent enough time in our word to be able to stand up and say, it ain't that, it's this. Peter had enough of a reservoir there, that word again, that he was able to draw out in that moment what God was doing. Are we there? So he quotes directly from Joel. And he said, this is Joel uh, uh, 2, 28 through 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall do dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Peter stands up and declares, y'all know, okay, here we go. Do you know the time difference between between Pentecost and when Joel wrote that? Over 800 years. He was able to reach back to a promise that was prophesied 800 years ago and say, now it's being fulfilled. 
Now, in this moment, it is happening. And the, 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 the concern that I have for the church is that while the culture is confused, we'll still let them control the conversation. For my concern is as, oh, well, people say this about Christians, and people say that about the church, and people say this about pastors, and, and we'll let culture's confusion dominate our conversation. We'll walk away. For some of us, this is how it would have been. People would have spilled out. There's an amazing move of God. I mean, the Holy Ghost is falling for the first time. And it is wild times. Nowhere ever in Scripture did it say that people spoke languages they never learned. It is, it, it is powerful. And we see nowhere in Scripture it prophesied that this would be how the Holy Ghost was going to fall. It doesn't say that the Holy Ghost is falling and then you're going to speak in tongues. This is happening live right here. And in the midst of all of this confused culture, as they're saying, all oh, these people are drunk, many of us would have been like, yeah, I guess they are. Mm -hmm. We would have picked up the narrative of the people that were observing. And what my concern becomes is, is what happens when the church starts to take cues from the culture, not from the word of God. What happens when the narrative out there about the church becomes the narrative in here about the church? Maybe we are really bigoted. Maybe we are really unloving. Maybe, maybe we are really drunk. Maybe it really doesn't take all that. Maybe it really is a waste of time. Maybe all preachers are about your money. Maybe, what? now y'all looking like y'all ain't heard none of this. You know what they're saying about us out there? You know what they're saying out there? These men are drunk. This isn't no move of God. Pastor Jim came last week and he preached an amazing message. And in it, he referenced the outpouring at Asbury. I don't know if you all were in here. He talked about it happening in the 70s. And then he talked about what happened this last summer, right? Or earlier this year, excuse me. And he, do you, do you know, not everybody believed Asbury was a revival. Was it Asbury? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not everybody believes that that was an outpouring of God. But there's got to be somebody in here that says, no, it's not, it's not what y'all are saying what it is. It's what God says it is. It's what the Lord says. Culture, culture, when we, when we, when we as Christians take our cue from culture, culture will always do one of these four things. Y'all ready? Culture will always try to, number one, dismiss what God is doing. Completely just cast it away. Just this, this, this is, this is not it. When we take our cues from culture, we'll become dismissive too. It'll be dismissive in our jokes. It'll be dismissive in our approach to the things of God. We'll always try to dismiss. And if they can't dismiss... Number two, what culture will try to do will be to, to disrupt. Well, I will try to stop what it is that God is doing. We see this later on this, is in, in this text because I'm learning to summarize. But if you go on later in Acts chapter, uh, I think it's four, five, six-ish, right? We'll see a whole other moment where, I think it's Acts 4 actually, where, where, where people are in jail. And then they brought them, they beat them and brought them before the Sanhedrin, which was like the governing of the, uh, the government of that day. Right? And, and they told him to stop, right? Are you going you are we gonna kill you? And you know what Peter did? He prayed a prayer, Lord, make us more bold to preach the gospel. So where culture would try, cultures literally they arrested them and tried to disrupt what God is doing. Is this is this who we should take our cue from? If they can't dismiss, or if they can't disrupt, the third thing they'll try to do is diminish it. They'll lessen what God is doing. They'll make the move of God something that's little. Something that should be just, just, just thought of as a, as a small thing. They, when, uh, when uh, 
um, when the outpouring was happening happening at Asbury, I don't know if, if you all even studied it, but basically it was a chapel service that didn't end. Not a, not not some famous worship artist. Not and I'm not against any of that. Not some famous preacher. I'm not against that either. It was students at a college that said at the end of the service, more. And God said, okay. Literally, the town council had to ask people not to come no more. I, like they, like, that, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like the town, it's, it was, it's uh, uh, Woodmore, Kentucky. They, they didn't have the infrastructure like, at all. If you all, uh, my, my, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Chris, he's the, he's the pastor of, of, of Duff, where I came from. Uh, his, his doctorate is from Asbury, right? So he was, he, was, he was describing what it's like. He's from a little town called Ivor, Virginia, okay? Uh, 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 Southampton County, okay? One road in, one road out, one stoplight, okay? He was like, AJ, that's, that's, that's kind of that's kinda where Asbury is. They, listen to me, listen to me. Eight hour backup to get into the city. The presence of God broke every fire code violation. <laughs> that, I mean, they, what you know, the, listen, the, the power of God falls so, so strongly that the town council has to say, no more, please, y'all. Where y'all coming from? Where is y'all coming? What happened? Do we. What was happening? Culture began to take the cue from the Christians. If they can't dismiss, disrupt, or diminish, here's the dangerous part. They'll try to define what has happened. Okay? If I can't dismiss it, make it stop, if I can't, or if I can't uh, uh, totally uh, cast it away, if I can't disrupt it to make it stop, if I can't diminish it, then I'll just, these men are drunk. These Christians are racist. These Christians are bigoted. These Christians are hateful. Then I'll just define it for you. But Peter, who was reading his work, didn't look for culture to define Christ. He looked into his word. He looked into the record. And Peter said, no, 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 no. These, these people are drunk. No, this is the promise that they've been waiting 800 years to see. This is the promise that has been making its way to us for 800 years. Peter recognized that this is the promise that I grew up hearing my mom and my dad talk about. This is the promise that I grew up reading about in the scriptures. This is the promise that, that I have been long awaiting for. This is the promise of the Spirit of God that my ancestors have been waiting on. This is, what, this is what Jesus would talk about, right? It says in uh, John 14 through 16, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, talking about the Spirit of God, to be with you forever, even the, or even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Look, Jesus said they don't know what to do with it, right? Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But guess who does know what to do with the Holy Ghost? You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. No, 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 no. These people are not drunk. These people are not crazy. These people have finally got the Holy Ghost. There's finally here. It's finally here. Not because we deserve it. Not because we knew the right words to pray. Not because we even had really the right expression of faith. They're in a room really saying, God said, wait here. They don't know what they're waiting on. They didn't even have the words to pray. There were no tongues yet, so they couldn't pray in the Holy Ghost. At least you can cheat now. You can pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit make intercession for you. They didn't even have that. They are doing their best with what they have, and then the Holy Spirit falls. And I don't know about you all, family, but there are times when I have felt unworthy and undeserving of the Spirit's presence in my life. And I have to remind myself that the Holy Ghost being available to me is not based on my faithfulness to Him. 
It is based on his faithfulness to himself. And because he promised it, the Holy Ghost is here. He's here because he said he'd be here. He's here in victory because he said he would be here. He's here in your marriage because he said he would be here. He's here to fulfill the permanent promise, and he's not taking himself back. He's here. He's here. He's here. Now, let me go on quickly to say that many of us are not in this house. Many of them <laughs> would try to say that the Spirit of God, as revealed in the New Testament, is not the Spirit of God, as we understand and express it today. In other words, that there would be a period of time where the Spirit of God would have been diminished to certain gifts. I don't have time to go through the gifts, okay? Because then we're going to be here forever. But where the Spirit of God would, would, would be diminished to a certain subset of gifts, right? A certain expression of himself, right? That what was poured out on Pentecost, this is the argument, what was poured out on Pentecost was only for those new Christians. It was only like a dynamite to establish the church and then the spirit withdrew himself. Are we there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't what the Bible says. Right, right. Acts 237, when it was falling, yeah. Peter got up in the sermon. Why am I hollering? And it says this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just, I just I caught myself. All right, here we go. I'm excited. All right, here we go. Acts 2, 37. In the sermon. Listen, this is when it's happening. Are we there? Live. Spirit dropping. Peter spitting. Here we go. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. This is at the end of the sermon, right? Peter and I preached them under the benches, as they would have said. And said to Peter, I don't know what's going on here. And the rest of the apostles, look. They, this is a question. After Peter preached the sermon, they said, well, now what? Right? They were like, well, brothers, what shall we do? I, don't, I said, this is a lot. Okay? So we got all the language that's happening. Okay? You, didn't, they, they, you missed the sermon. I, I skipped the sermon part. Peter was out there talking about him. Okay? He said, you killed Jesus. Right? He was like, the chief court so y'all moved him. Right? Peter is dropping these bars. Okay? Then at the end of the message, they were like, okay, sounds convincing. Right? What do we do? Okay? And Peter said to them, this is what you're going to do. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And after you repent and baptize, uh-oh, here we go, it's the beginning of the year, right? After you repent and are baptized, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pause. Now, in order to prove that this is the only place that, it would, that the Holy Spirit planned to pour himself out like, uh, like that, you'd have to stop at this, at this sentence. You're going to receive the gift of the Holy He's talking to the people that heard, right? The 3,000, right? Might have been more than that, right? We know the 3,000 were added to the church. But he's talking to the people. He's saying, hey, here's how you respond to the message, right? You repent, baptize, and then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We don't argue with that, right? Many of us can agree. This is what happened. But the only problem with stopping at verse 38 is that there's verse 39. Okay, well, let's keep reading. In the same sentence or same message, for the promise is, is just for you who are here. The promise is just for those who are who are who have heard this initial message. The promise is just for those that were at the day of Pentecost. No, the promise of the Holy Ghost is permanent. For the promise is for you and for your children. I'm talking victory kids got the Holy Ghost this morning. The promise is for you and your children. And wait a minute. Uh oh, here we go. We in there, fam. And for all who are far away off. So the promise of Pentecost was for them, their children, and Victory Church of Charlottesville. We've got the ghost too. For everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Peter said to get the Holy Ghost won't just for this moment. Peter was preaching with us in his eyesight. Yes. And he said, it's not just for today. The promise will continue generation after 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 generation. The promise was permanent. I'm not taking it back. Yes. Yes. So the Holy Ghost is here forever. 
for all whom the Lord calls to himself. And family, sometimes we got to look. We got to learn how to fight with the promises of God. Sometimes we got to learn how to look. You, hey, look, sometimes you got to square up on Satan and just be like, look, fam. Okay? We have to learn what it's like to fight with the promises of God. I come in here, family, I'll tell you honestly. Sometimes I don't know if my preaching going to do it. Sometimes I, don't, I, I might doubt my prophesying. I might doubt my praying. But one thing I'm going to come up in here with, I got the presence of God with me. I got the Holy Ghost with me. And where I might fall short, God has never failed. I got the Spirit of God with me this morning. And that is a safe bet. We've got the Spirit of God. I stand on the scriptures, Matthew 28 and 20. And behold, I'm with you always, even yeah. to the end of the age. Yeah. Yeah. I stand on Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate me from the love of God. I've got the presence of God with me this morning, fam. I stand on Hebrews 13, 5, that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And family, <laughs> Look, and if I forget the scriptures, I still got his name, Emmanuel, God with us. So sometimes I just got to walk around, Emmanuel, God is with me. All the finances are looking funny, Emmanuel, God is with us. All my relationships are looking funny, Emmanuel, God is with us. All that my friends turn their back on me, Emmanuel, God is with us. I've got the living hope of God resting inside of me, and he's with me. The promise, the promise was permanent. Amen. No struggle can separate you from that. Yeah. No heartbreak can separate you from that. No sin can separate you from that. Yeah. You have a permanent promise. Yeah. Stop trying to give the spirit back. Yeah. Yeah. You have a permanent promise that the Holy Ghost is with you. Yeah. Uh-oh, family, did we follow on something else? Yeah. And if God be for us, then, <laughs> then, then who can be against us? <laughs> if the Holy Ghost is with us, yeah. if I'm on the side of God, then who can be against us, family? Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Let me prophesy to us as a church. Let me prophesy to us as a people. The power of Pentecost Sunday for Victory Church of Charlottesville is not just that the Holy Spirit is on the way. It is not just that he is making his way to the city or making his way into the service. The power of Pentecost Sunday is he's already here. He's already moving. He's already drawing. He's already bringing people back to himself. And family, if he's here, then gifts are here. Then power is here. Then miracles are here. Then healing is here. Then deliverance is here. Then wholeness is here. Yeah. Then freedom is here. Yeah. Then if God is here, anything can happen in this house. Adoption is here. Romans 8, 15 and 16 says this. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have, oh, here it goes, the spirit of adoption. As sons uh, by whom we are crying out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Yes. If he's here, if the Spirit of God is in this place, then guess what? Truth is here. Yes. Truth is here. Yes. John 16, 13 says this. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. If we've got the Spirit of God, we're, there's not a lie that can stand. There's not deception that can stand. If I've got the Spirit of God, then I've got truth with me. Yes. To lead me. Yes. If the Spirit of God is here, then freedom is here. Yes. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And let me just stop the message for a moment and speak to every chain, every shackle, every struggle that has to lock people up. I declare unto God and unto you that where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. God, I pray every chain be broken in this place. Every place that we're locked up, Lord, open up the door. There's liberty when the Spirit of God gets to running through a service. If freedom is here, holiness is here. Galatians 5.16. But I say walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
If holiness is here, then fruit is here. Yeah. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against that, there is no law. If holiness and fruit is here, then salvation is here. Yeah. Romans 8, 11 says, If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, yeah. he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. And if salvation is here, then power is here. Acts 1 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and Charlottesville. Family, I'm here to tell you Pentecost is worth the party. Pentecost is worth the celebration. Pentecost is worth pausing to remember the permanence of the promise. And I don't know, family. What you might have walked in here with, but I know who you walked in here with. And if God is with you through the Spirit, then nothing can be against you. Nothing can be against you. Family, some of you in this place this morning haven't, haven't felt the presence of God in a while. Or we're excited about what I'm saying and what I'm preaching. There's some of us who honestly just needed to remember, oh, that promise is for me. Some of us have forgotten the spirit of God as a weapon. As a weapon. Family young. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm doing this, but I don't have time to talk about all, all the gifts of the Spirit. There's nine of them, right? And there's ministering gifts, too. There's like 12 of those, and then there's like offices, there's five of those. There's a lot, there's a lot that happened when the Spirit fell. But I, 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 I gave like a, a flyby version real fast uh, when I talked about um, uh, Spirit and Power in that message, and I, and I outlined the gifts of the Spirit. I don't have time to, um, I don't have time to break all that down. But listen, the gifts that are in 1 Corinthians 12, given by the Spirit, listen, were to benefit the whole, not to benefit you, not to benefit. It was to benefit the body. The reason y'all hear my passion when I talk about the Holy Ghost is because I think. Part of what we have to recognize is we need him in this house yes. to help that house. Yes. Yes. When you reconcile to God, reconcile to each other. Multicultural, multi-generational in Charlottesville, Virginia. Right. What y'all think we're doing in here? Yeah. If we don't got the Holy Ghost. Right. If we don't need, every Sunday I need the Lord to translate yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So people can hear the wonderful yeah. works of God in their own language. Yeah. Every Sunday in a multicultural gathering, we need Pentecost. Yes, yes. Every single Sunday. Yes. Family, I'm jealous for the Spirit of God in the service. Yes. I don't want, I don't, what is this if it's not the Spirit? Of, like, what am I doing? Yes. If the Spirit of God doesn't come to anoint a song or to anoint study or to anoint a sermon, what are we doing? Go to a TED Talk for that. What I am trying to give you is not just positive encouragement. It's not just affirmations for your life. I'm trying to touch into heaven and become a portal for the Spirit of God to reach you, to touch you in this place. And if he does it, then what are we doing? If we're just coming to church with low expectations. The vain repetitions is something he didn't ask for. I was thinking the other day, and, and this concept of coming already ready. Somebody, somebody got to have faith for the service. Yeah, yeah. Somebody. Yeah. Anybody. Take one, take two. I'll auctioneer up here. Somebody got to come 
not just coming to receive. Somebody got to come saying, I think God can do something. Hey. Somebody's got to come because listen, 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 listen. If we all come waiting on the person next to us to catch fire so that we can be warm, then what are we doing? We'll have a bunch of lukewarm mess. You have like, like room temperature, like oatmeal. You have porridge. <laughs> Don't know where that analogy was going, but it's out there now. We will have a lukewarm mess. But if some of us come with the fire of God already in us, if some of us come with the expectation that God could do anything, if some of us come recognizing that there was a permanent promise that was given, up, given to us through the Spirit of God, and when the Spirit of God hits a house, all oh, things could happen. If some of us come already ready, that means that there's enough fire in the place that when somebody comes to the door that's a little bit cold because of the week that they've had, or they're a little bit discouraged because of the life that they are living, they can come and they can catch warmth by the Spirit of God that we have already residing inside of us. That's, that's, the, that's the promise of Pentecost. I don't have to wait until Sunday. I can stoke this flame all week long. And then family, let me tell you, not when lukewarm meets lukewarm, or when, or when, or, or, or when, uh, 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 kind of uh, halfway following the Lord meets halfway following the Lord. I'm saying, could you imagine this place on a Sunday morning? When fire meets fire. <laughs> Could you imagine this place? I mean, I'm talking, I don't care if we got instruments or not. I don't care if we got a full auditorium or not. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost fell with 11 scared folks in a room and it flipped the world upside down. I'm talking about what could happen if some of us just got together and we're all in one place, all on one, one accord. What could happen if the Holy Ghost fell here? What could happen in your marriage? What could happen in your neighborhood? What could happen on your job? What could happen in your finances? If we allow the Holy Ghost to have his way, what could happen in this place? For some of us, we need that touch this morning. Some of us, we need that touch this morning. See, some of us in this morning right now, that flame is starting to be fanned. For some of us, you're starting to feel it even now. There's something in you right now that's saying, oh, I remember what this was like. Oh, I remember what this was like. The Spirit of God is making himself known in this place. And I believe there's another touch from heaven that wants to fall in this place. I believe that it's not just my job to preach about Pentecost. I believe it's my job to experience Pentecost. And family, I believe us as a people are to step in today, are to step into the Spirit of God in a way in which revitalizes us, refreshes us, and pushes us out into that city. Not of our own accord, not of our own strength, not of our own study, not of our own expertise, but because the promise still stands. Because the promise still goes from generation to generation to generation. And by birthright, we get the ghost. By birthright, we get the Holy Spirit making himself known in this house. Are we there, family? Come on, let's stand to our feet and give God a big shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, God, for your presence and for your power in this place. Family, if you know, uh, Lord, what am I doing? Okay. Fam, I just, I just want us, I don't want us to miss what God is doing. Okay? If you recognize in this place that you need to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, we want to keep the, that gentle. I'm not saying you've never had before. I'm not saying that I, I, this is without condition. If you know in this place that the power of Pentecost, the power of this permanent promise that we've been given of the Holy Spirit is not a part of your daily, daily routine. It's not, I, you know, AJ, I'm walking out this life and, I'm, and I think I'm, I'm living below the promise. I'm not, I'm not living 
with the greater experience of what it means to be spirit-led and spirit-filled and, and to have the, the promises of God with us. If that's you, I don't care if you're a leader in this house, I don't care if you're a visitor in this house, I don't, if you need to experience a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost, I just want to ask, I just want to ask, okay? Can we just come to the altar right up here? If you need to experience a fresh touch of God, would you just come and let's just ask God to do it? We don't have, let's just ask the Lord to do what only he can do. I'm not, I'm not going to prod something. I'm not going to manufacture anything. I just, you know what? I need, I need a, I need the Lord to do something. I need the power of Pentecost. I just need a fresh touch. Come on, y'all. And we're getting the full in the aisles. Y'all come on up here. I just need a fresh touch of the Spirit of God. I recognize there's some things before me that I, I've got to do. And there's, there's some mission that God has called me to. And I just need a fresh touch from God. Okay. All right. Come on. Let's begin to pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Sora la 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 la